Hello, it's Scott Manley, and today in Kerbal Space Program, we are setting forth for the Julian moon of Tylo. Now, Tylo is uh, one of the hardest bodies to get to in the game because it's around the moon, uh, around the planet Jule, and it has a very high surface gravity. So, this is going to take a really long time. First of all, we have to test our lander because you don't want to get there and find out that you uh, land, but you can't get out. So on the landing pad, I drop it down and get the astronaut out so he can try to get back on the ladder. Now, the gravity on Tylo is very close to that of Kerbin. Uh, it's slightly lower, but not enough that it matters. But the second test is whether we can actually take this vehicle to orbit without refueling it, without any staging or anything involved. So uh, we're not going to drop any of these uh, external tanks because we're going to carry this whole thing up into orbit. Now you can see it is moving very, very slowly. It, it's accelerating barely at all. The only thing powering it is this mainsail engine. I'm using the mainsail engine because it gets the best thrust to weight ratio. However, its uh, ISP, its, its specific impulse, is lower than another, a lot of other engines. And this may not be the best way to go, but it's what I decided on. Um, so we're going to take this up, get it into orbit, that's easy enough, and it does in fact go all the way there without me having to resort to re reaction control thrusters or anything. I'm going to put it in a 100 kilometer orbit, yes I have got a very busy low carbon orbit, and in fact it becomes, it has become very annoying recently because the it makes it very hard to select exactly what target I'm using. But there we go, we're going to stick it into a south pointing orbit, we've used up a bunch of fuel, now we're going to refuel it. So, we are going to build up, uh, or we've basically developed this refueling tanker, or at least we try to develop it, and it took quite a few tries to figure out the best way to do this. As you can see, we've had a few accidents here and there. <laughs> Things uh, never quite worked the way, they, the way that I wanted them to. Especially those orange tanks that had a nasty habit of overheating if or the rockets would overheat if they were attached to them So you had to put buffers between the tanks and the rest of the spacecraft Then of course there was a propensity for just simply collapsing under the thrust of the the main sails as you see again and again Sometimes the rocket would survive sometimes it wouldn't but the good thing is these are all unmanned spacecraft You know, we've already sent our astronauts up in the spacecraft and so sending up multiple refueling trips it's not such a problem if they're exploding all the time because at least we're not losing any lives the guys are just kind of sitting in orbit waiting while the rocket guys do their thing oh yes uh, well that one looks like a little better that one actually may in fact get all the way to orbit or Nope, it doesn't. Yes. <laughs> there we go, shooting off into the unknown, thrusting away, consuming all its fuel, heading off at uh, whatever speed it was last set at. Actually, uh, what happens is it starts to wobble and then flips apart for no apparent reason. Yeah, um, so we kind of switched back and forth between using the nuclear thruster and the, the poodle power for it. Uh, Regardless, we had a lot of issues with separating these from the rest of the spacecraft. Um, <laughs> we would sometimes lose things on launch, such as in this case. But I think you'll agree, it actually flew surprisingly well, considering it had lost one of its four solid rocket boosters. It only started to lean over a little, uh, but in fact, I couldn't. It could take it all the way to orbit if I wanted. Um, What's happening here? Is this going to work? Is this the final build? Or is this going to explode again? That's looking pretty good. That's looking pretty good. Just going to throttle this one back. You see that we've got these little tuna can sized tanks between the um, between the engines, between the orange tanks and the and the engines and that stops them overheating. So yeah, we got that up and I, I managed to time this just right. I literally used the main engine and ended up uh, right next to my launch vehicle and uh, docking easy enough I tended to let the manned spacecraft do the docking so we just pointed them to the north and pointed the manned ship to the south and we dock them and uh, from there it was a I would be refueling now we can 
we have like uh what is it we've got a, a large tank and we have a half tank i guess so we've got essentially five mini tanks worth of fuel it takes two to three well it takes three refueling trips but you end up with one of them sitting in space partially fueled after you detach these if you're really patient and ocd you can deorbit the whole thing using the rcs system it is possible but uh also you can just end flight that's you know if if that's your thing uh but if a kessler syndrome is something that haunts your nightmares then feel free to spend the half hour or so it takes to deorbit these things with rcs so yeah we got to repeat this a couple of times until we have a fuel a full spacecraft and then we'll leave that on there once we've refueled it. It gets pretty easy to, to do this docking once you get good at it. Um, the the fuel tankers aren't so well set up. I think they need an extra set of, of thrusters on the main stage as well. Yep, final docking here. Three, two and a half hours into this mission. Uh, the, the mission clocks get all messed up, I've noticed, because docking and undocking has a habit of resetting clocks on some spacecraft. I, I'm not sure what exactly it is. That was the least of my troubles. Anyway, now we're going to launch another spacecraft which will act as the drive unit for the Tylo lander. This is going to dock to the Tylo lander and boost it through its interplanetary travel to take it to the target. And uh, you see, uh, it's being we're, we're fueling this mainsail from the uh, from the fuel in the tanks. And the problem is actually because I've got fuel lines, it won't naturally drain that last tank. So I'm manually draining the fuel upwards now that we're in a, a ballistic trajectory. And once the fuel is all transferred, we can cut that loose and switch over to the nuclear rocket. So uh, I don't know what staging was set up. So I just did it manually. There we go. And now we're moving into orbit in under nuclear and aerospike power. Now, of course, that's in orbit. I've used up a lot of the fuel. We need a couple more launches to refuel that thing. Oh boy. That's, uh, I think, seven launches so far. <laughs> Four launches for the, the crew capsule and three launches for this thing. And it again, it's just as uh, hard. The minute the... The probe-driven ones I, I find kind of annoying to dock because they, they need the RCS to really turn, especially the really long ones. Um, so yeah, bolt the two ships together, finally. And uh, <laughs> a magnificent creation of orbital construction. Um, if I was to do this again, I would add more struts between the... Uh, I would add more struts between the docking ports because... The docking ports do tend to flex a whole lot, and that becomes... Well, that was my biggest issue, I think, in the end. Actually, if I was to do this again, I would instead use four different rocket... I would use four systems attached to the... Um, attached to the back of my lander. I would put the decouplers... Not the decouplers, the docking ports underneath. But yeah, look, you can see this as we uh, throttle up the engines. The whole thing compresses a whole lot, but... If you're good and don't try to turn, then it won't flip out. Uh, it will sometimes randomly start to flex, uh, at which point you want to be careful and possibly cut back your power. Time acceleration can spontaneously destroy you, so don't time accelerate. Uh, at least when you're using the aero spikes. I probably made a mistake putting the aero spikes on there, and you will see later. But um, I was impatient. <laughs> Yes, Shelley, Bilford, and Gilden, or Glidden, Glidden, Kerman. Those are my crew, and they are they are heading off on this deep mission. So now we switch to the switch to just the the nuclear power that is going to take us the rest of the way. We we could we really should have done this in multiple passes and just ditched those aerospikes completely. Um, note to self, you know, it, patience has its virtues. So yeah, from here we're now going to boost ourselves up towards dual orbit. Unfortunately the phase wasn't matched, but well, that's the nature of things. Yeah, uh, shut down the engines when you're ejecting stuff because you have a nasty habit of flipping things out. You can also see on this, there's a, the drive stage also has a, a bunch of space probes attached to the side. Part of the plan is we're going to land on Tylo with the main ship, but the space probes are going to pay visits to all the other Julian moons and thereby 
you know, they're get, essentially hitching a ride on this spacecraft. Now, um, uh, as you're getting out here, I start to realize that I perhaps I'm not bringing enough fuel with me. Or maybe I burned too much fuel in the... <laughs> using those aero spikes. Um, we're not even at Jewel yet, and we're down to one tank. Oh boy, this is going to be fun, the fuel margins. Yeah, it, a lot of this mission ends up with burn times that the maneuver node system tells me I have burn times of like half an hour. Uh, thankfully, once you're down to just the nuclear engine, you can in fact time accelerate to our phys use physical time acceleration. That'll be pretty good. But, uh, you know, the the nuclear rocket, it is a potent and powerful thing in the hands of somebody which, who is patient. Yep. Uh, I start to run out of fuel, so I start having to pump fuel from my main ship into my drive stage. And uh, at this point, I should be thinking that maybe this mission needs a few more fuel tanks sent out to Jewel. <laughs> of course, we, we're doing our inclination correction. That is going to take... What does it say? It takes. It says it's going to take six minutes or five minutes or four, whatever. It's going to take a bit of time. Kind of, again, more patience. And, yep, more fuel transfer. <laughs> there is quite an art in transferring fuel between spacecrafts so you don't end up with an unbalanced spacecraft. You can't transfer fuel within symmetry groups right now due to a bug slash feature. Apparently Harvester did it. Be he, he understands the bug is there and there's a reason that it's there. But I believe in his bug comment he can't quite remember what the reason was. But that's the nature of things. Anyway, once we got out to Jewel, we set ourselves up for another orbit that will intersect Jewel on the second pass. You can see the timer here turning red because Lagsbane is kicking in. That means we're not actually getting four times time acceleration. Anyway, with that adjustment, we're going to come back round and on the next orbit, we're going to interact with Jewel. And that's where I'm going to leave it for part one. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.